Okay, this inner space, there's a lots of opinion about, out there by theoretical physicists about what the inner space is or isn't. The inner space is in the swampland. The inner space requires ultra fine tuning. The inner space has a Boltzmann problem, whatever a Boltzmann problem is, don't worry about it. The symmetry of the inner space, OD1, is inconsistent with finite entropy. The inner space is unstable. We live in something which in time will become very close to the inner space. Of course, they could be wrong, but that's the way it's going now. We urgently need a concrete, tractable model to investigate the kind of claims and to investigate the nature of the connection between the inner space, cosmological space time, and quantum gravity, quantum information, all the things that we've been studying in another context. So let me begin with a holographic principle. The holographic principle says, we can put it this way, if we take a nested series of nested set of spatial regions, each bounded by its own boundary with some restrictions, uh, some convexity restrictions, which I won't go into, then the boundary of each region has enough degrees of freedom in the holographic sense to describe everything within that region and not enough to describe anything outside that region. ADS-CFT is a special case. It's a special case in which the geometry is asymptotically, for the most part, anti de Sitter. There's a picture of a spatial slice of anti de Sitter space. And if we want to describe the whole space, we need to put the holographic, the hologram, let's just call it the hologram, out at the boundary where the area is largest. What about the sitter space? All right, I've written down the metric of the sitter space. If you know it, you know it. If you don't know it, you don't know it. And I don't think you're gonna learn it from, uh, from my lecture today. So I'll just jump over it. There it is, there it was. Here are two Penrose diagrams. Let me uh, not give away the punchline. There are two Penrose diagrams. They're completely different geometries. The left one is the two-sided black hole, the two-sided ADS black hole, so-called two-sided uh, black hole. And the right side is the sitter space. Notice that they look exactly the same. They have exactly the same causal structure, but the geometries are completely different. Let me get my laser pointer out here. Yeah, okay. To see the difference, you can just imagine slicing them through the t equals zero section. What you see in the ADS two-sided black hole system is a wormhole, terminates out at the boundaries with an infinitely large boundary. The infinitely large boundary is just the boundary of the um, of the sitter space, anti de sitter space, excuse me. On the other hand, if you slice through the interior of the de Sitter space, what you see is quite the opposite. Oh, incidentally, the dotted line here is the horizon. The dotted line here is also the horizon. And in fact, the horizon of static patches. Static patches, I will leave it to you to look up if you don't know what they mean. Okay, so the Sitter space and anti de Sitter space are very different despite the fact that their Penrose diagrams are identical. Now, how does this difference affect the holographic description? Where shall we put the holographic description, the holographic degrees of freedom of the anti de Sitter space black holes? We want to put it out where the area is largest so that those degrees of freedom encompass everything within. For the anti de Sitter case, that means putting the holograms out at the boundaries or as close to the boundaries as we like to get them. On the other hand, for this, and notice that that is not at the horizon. The horizon is where the area is smallest. By contrast, in the city space, the largest area is where the horizon is. And that is the place where the rules tell us to put the holographic degrees of freedom. Well, that's quite a difference. And it accounts for much 
of the difficulty in understanding the holographic description of the Sitter space. The, the, the Sitter space hologram is on the horizon. Or right, what does physics look like in, in the Sitter space from the point of view of an observer as far from the horizon as possible? That would be the fellow over here, for example, Bob. Alice, of course, is over here. Forget Alice. Bob is over here and he's looking at the world. He looks out away from him and he sees the horizon. What does that world look like? He looks around him and he sees a horizon out at the boundary of his observable region of space. What he sees is a kind of thermal distribution of quanta, very, very low energy quanta. He sees a world which at its boundaries has an entropy, or in fact, a world that has an entropy. And that entropy is proportional to pi over G times the radius of curvature of the de Sitter space. He also sees a world in which there's a Hawking temperature, which is one over two pi L, which is incredibly small if L is 10 billion light years. And altogether, he sees about one thermal quantum one photon or graviton of wavelength equal to the de Sitter radius. Except out near the bound, except out near his horizon, <clears throat> where things get hotter. Now, what is the physics that the quantum mechanics of the Sitter space will be telling us about? It will be telling us about fluctuations. Thermal fluctuations, to be sure but also other kinds of what we can call out of equilibrium fluctuations, fluctuations which are large scale. For example, a fluctuation may happen in which in the interior of the static patch, a black hole nucleates. One knows how to calculate the probability for this. The probability is e to the minus the entropy deficit, the entropy deficit is the decrease in entropy due to the presence of the black hole. Now, you might think that the black hole increases the entropy of the, uh, of the state, but that's not true. Because what you find, if you go back to the original picture, what you find is the nucleation of the black hole shrinks the cosmic horizon. This picture here is a little bit smaller than this picture. It pulls in the cosmic horizon, and it pulls in the cosmic horizon enough that it decreases the area more than the black hole increases the area of horizons. And the result is that the probability for the nucleation of anything is e to the minus the entropy deficit, and the entropy deficit must always be positive. Another way to say that is that the vacuum or the empty de Sitter space, it's not empty, it has some thermal quanta in it, but it has the largest possible entropy and all fluctuations away from that have smaller entropy. One can calculate very easily the probability for the nucleation of such a, uh, a black hole, even if it were just a black hole of Planckian mass, the probability for the nucleation of it would be e to the minus 10 to the 61 in units in which m is represented in the Planck mass. So these are incredibly rare fluctuations, but in fact, they're all that really happens in the Sitter space. And uh, that is what a theory of the Sitter space will be telling us about. 